Hello everybody and today we are going to start with a number of tutorials using Fusion 360's CAM utility or computer aided manufacturing to create uh, tool paths for things like a CNC plasma cutter, mill, uh, water jet or laser cutter to use so that we can make uh, pretty much whatever we want. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to design a real simple uh, flange uh, that would be used on like I don't know, it could be used on anything from like a railing base to uh, maybe an exhaust flange. So I'll have the dimensions of this as I go through and so it's no real big deal, but essentially what we're gonna create is a four inch rectangle, I'm sorry, square, straight four by four with just a two inch hole in the center. That's and uh, you know what, we'll add a fillet, uh, one inch uh, fillet all the way around. So we get something like that. So we hit enter, okay. Finish sketch. And we're just gonna extrude that up in amount, 0.125. I'm just gonna do eighth inch. Usually when I create these tool paths, I just do one uh, eighth inch, regardless of the gauge material I'm using, just so that you know, you have some sort of thickness. So we'll just say that this is the flange. And if we want to add a couple more holes in it, let's do that. Let's create a new sketch up on top. Let's just say we do, uh, I don't know, quarter inch holes spaced around. So I'm just going to do 0.25 for my quarter inch holes. I will dimension them in. Let's go 0.75 inches from the top and the side. Now what I can do is I can actually pattern these all the way around. So let's get a uh, circular pattern of this around the center point. And I just want four of these, just like that. So you can see the preview of them coming up, hit okay. Right, so center point, all the way around, finish sketch, and now click on them to extrude. And I'm just going to pull the arrow through. So there we have it. Quick little fan, flange that like a pipe would go into. And then you could uh, bolt this down into the ground or however you want. All right. So let's just save this. I'm going to call it a pipe flange. And there we have it. So we've done all of this in the design aspect of Fusion 360. Now we go to the manufacturer section. So in the manufacturer section, we see that we have milling, turning, additive processes like 3D uh, modeling, inspection, fabrication, utilities. We'll be going through every one of these, uh, but we are gonna start with the fabrication side. And this is where in fabrication, if you look, you see you have um, any sort of cutting capability, whether that's laser jet, water jet, or CNC plasma. Now, in here, uh, I'll show you how to create the tool paths to use that, but one of the first things we need to do is basically say to, to the machine, like, where is our XYZ coordinate? So in order to do that, we go into setup. Now, in setup here, I have XY, and if we rotate this view, my Z axis. I like to keep my XYZ over in this front corner here. Now, on this space, it doesn't make much difference, right? But we have XY, Z coming out. So in the little setup menu that appeared here, I'm going to click the operation type of cutting so that it, it's already going to default us to the fabrication menu. I'm going to keep my orientation to the model orientation and to the origin. You can change these, but my stock box point, I'm going to click there. Now, if you click uh, the model orientation, just the way it's set up, um, that's fine. You can also go in and have to select your X, Y axis. So say you modeled something different on a different plane than what was. So for instance, I need to select my X, Y axis because I modeled it differently. So X axis and come and say, oh, that's my X axis, that edge, my Y axis, there like that. And now notice that the work coordinate system changed. I can flip these along the edges. So they're like that. But I, for what we're doing here, I'm gonna do model orientation because I selected that initial XY plane to model on. 
Now the model, I'm going to click and make sure that it's highlighted so that it selects just that model there. Otherwise, if we click off, right, it doesn't know what we're looking at, but you can click it and there it's highlighted blue. That is basically now your, your work coordinate system is all set up with everything that it's using. Now I'm going to come to stock. I want to make it sure that there is no additional stock. Notice that that little yellow area moves down, was kind of swoops in. Here we have different size box modes. Um, just basically from looking at the stock itself, we're going to do relative size box. So it looks at what is here. You could do fixed size box and say, hey, cut this out of like a five by five inch um, piece of metal. But we're doing relative size. Oops, sorry. Get back to that screen. There it is. All right. So it tells us that it's a four inch by four inch by 0.125 inch Z height uh, piece of material that we're going to need. No big deal. But no additional stock. And here, program name or number. Um, on my machine that I use at home, I can actually put in like flange, where I can type in after the 1001, uh, and we'll go into a numbering system at some other point in time, but for right now, it makes a difference. And the machine work offsets, we don't have to worry about it now, because we don't have multiples, so we're not talking about that, and you hit OK. Now you'll see overall on here that we have setup one. So setup one is for this, it shows us where X, Y, Z, our work coordinate system is based off of. Okay, so now let's make the actual plasma cutter itself. So we're gonna go up to tools here. And we're gonna take a look at Fusion 360 sample tool holders. So if we're gonna click through, they give you a bunch of probing, and there's our plasma cutter. We are going to right click on that and copy tool. Then go up to your local library into that field, right click, hit it paste tool. So that is our plasma cutter that we are now going to edit. Right click, edit tool. So we can call it plasma cutter. I'm putting version two because I have a second one. I don't want to get them confused. Cutter tells me that. Curve width is the width of the arc. We're going 0.055. Nozzle clearance diameter, 0.05 I believe is fine. Holder, plasma cutter head, cutting data. Uh, we can, we'll just change it to 60 inches per minute and post process so we don't need to worry about. We'll hit accept and there we have it. All right, if we take a look at mine, I actually have a nozzle clearance diameter of one and that's a head clearance there. Here, nozzle clearance is 0 0.05. You know what, let's go in and change that. So if we want to change any parameters, you right click, edit tool, cutter, nozzle clearance one inch hit accept and there we have it so now we have a plasma cutting torch head uh, all programmed in we hit close and now we're going to create the tool path to do this we go up to where it says cutting it brings up this pop-up menu tool right we're going to go hit select go into your library select the plasma cutter torch head we just made hit select Notice it defaults in the feed rates that we had already programmed. Cutting mode, we want to set the through auto. If you're not sure about something, you can hold over it and it basically tells you what it's going to be doing. Click next to geometry. There's two ways to do this. If it's something similar like this, you can actually select all the contours you want and not others. I do this sometimes depending on what it is, but this is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to click on the surface and notice it selects all the contours. We want it to do all the loops, right? Like that. So it shows you any loop that is selected will get it done from outer to inner loops. We're doing them all. And if we look at the side, it says use to offset selected edges, right? So here, they're basically saying you offsetting uh, inside or outside from the general edge of the sketch. So we want it to start outside, right? Outside here so that we don't go worry about cutting into the material. So that's what it goes off to. Um, you can play with the settings and you'll see how it changes, but that's our basic one. Tabs we're not worried about. Tabs is basically, uh, if we don't want this part to fall out, it'll create uh, the material cutting from, we can leave these little tabs and then break them off if we want. 
we're going to leave it with that. It's not really much of an issue. Come over here to heights. Typically, you don't have to change this, but if we rotate the view, it just basically says where our clearance heights are going to be. With the CNC plasma table, you don't, they don't really change too much in heights, uh, unless you have an automatic uh, a torch height controller, which I do on mine, but we're not worried about it here. Passes. We are going to change the tolerance to 0 0.001. What this does is it basically, if there's too tight of a tolerance, it creates these very large files that have to go in. Usually when I click tolerance of 0 0.001, I also go to smoothing. If you hover over smoothing, what it does is that any arcs, it breaks up into fewer segments so that the machine's program, so the G code that's produced, is not as long. And as a result, the processor in the computers can run it a little bit easier. Uh, we don't have to worry about the stock delete. Competi compensation. This is, uh, we keep to the left. So here it shows you how it works in response to the edges. All right. Sometimes what I do is I'll put the cutting head directly on the selected edge. So it cuts center on it. And I do that for real fine detail or single edges. So you can do either right or left offsets. I typically keep it left. Stop to leave. We don't worry about linking. Okay. So now this is like anything else that we want to do. Usually keep a lead in. So what will happen is as the arc comes into the part, it'll lead into it. So the arc starts, blows through the material, and then goes. I usually give this a 0.05. It's about the radius of the curve. So it's a little bit further off. Sweep angle, I usually put at 90. So it comes 90 degrees in from the part. Lead in distance, I set to zero. So basically it just starts the arc and goes in. Pierce clearance, that's basically the curve width. Sometimes if you're getting into a real tight area, you could drop this down. Entry position, um, we'll have it enter up here and notice the point comes in and you hit OK. Oh, so one other thing that I forgot to change is in over here in passes, composition type in computer. Okay, so let's just run through all those again. We have the plasma cutter selected, which automatically puts in the feed rates. Here, uh, we have our contour selected. Heights we don't change, passes, 0 0.001. I found this is a good tolerance with smoothing selected, which puts in the default of 0 0.001. Left side with uh, left compensation, computer compensation here. And then we put in a lead in of 0 0.05 at 90 degrees, zero. The light just turned off on me. There we go. Lead out, which is the exact opposite of lead in. You can keep that checked. In our PS Clint, we hit OK, and you'll notice in a second there is our code. Now, if we want to know how well it works, or if it looks like it's working correctly, we come over to here and you can hit simulate. Once you hit simulate and then play, it runs through the code as if it was going to be on the table. There it is. And we can, as it goes around, you can actually change the view. And you can see how that curve comes into play on that outside edge. Let's look at it again. There it is. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, you've basically just created your first toolpath to make uh, some sort of flange. Over here on the right side, it just talks about keeping the tool head transparent or solid, program points. Uh, if you want to look at the tool header holder or not, toolpath mode. If you want to look at the stock, that's there. So it'll show you what it's actually cutting. Any sort of info that you need, so ours, the positions, any rapiding, and then stats, basically the machining time it would take, and the distance that it is going through, number of operations and tool changes, all that's there in that uh, menu. And there it is again. Take a quick look at it. And if it looks good there, most likely it'll be okay on the machine. Now there's one other step here that we are not doing at the moment, and that is the post processor. Right now, this is basically just a quick way to make a G code for, uh, uh, sorry, set up a number of parameters to create G code for to run this machine. 
Also, if you look in here, you can see where your lead-ins and lead-outs work and how the holes go and everything like that when, you're when you do your offsets. If we were to post this out to a machine, which means that it actually convert what we just did into a G-code here, um, we would have to put in the processor that we are actually using in order to do this. And then that would post the code out. Um, we're not doing this on an actual uh, uh, plasma cutter, though we could, uh, and I can get that actual post out for that to be done. But we'll worry about it then another time. So we just hit cancel there. But for right now, you just created a toolpath with the simulation. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed this. A little bit long, but it's the whole process start to finish. Have a good day.